Binge watch and learn on TRS Clips. How does one find a guru? So it's difficult and also easy. Hmm. Difficult because the question has an assumption. When people say that, how do I find a guru? They are assuming that they will have a top grade guru who will guide them. Why do we have this assumption? Because we read a lot of spiritual literature, people who are interested. So you have read autobiography of yogi or some other text and there is Mahavatar Bhavaji and in your mind you are fantasizing that Mahavatar Bhavaji will come to me and I will give you So people, everybody has that by the way. Okay, Some subconscious desire that some fancy exceptional guru will come. Uh, there is also the reason why this is happening because culturally we are told to revert the gurus, which is correct in my opinion. Okay, But uh, I also feel and I have myself passed through wrong gurus also. Uh, people who projected that they have certain knowledge or certain things and then I realized that it was all more or less um, stories okay and I left them so Shastras mention so first of all before you go into a guru let's just break it down into a simple format something that can be easy to follow for an individual first of all you start some practice don't wait for a guru to come okay a guru is absolutely necessary if you are into two types of practices. One is if you actually want to do proper tantra sadhana, formal, then you will need a guru for the initiation purposes. That is necessary. Okay. Proper tantra sadhana. You will need a guru to initiate you. Okay. Uh, if you want that, where are such gurus? There are many gurus like this. Uh, they are, and if you have to do very complicated yogic practices, what I mean by yoga is not the uh, standard definition that you see in TV and all that, you know, weight loss yoga and all that, Wo to apna jo karna hai karo. but I am saying yoga that will uh, manipulate your breathing to the, uh, to the various asanas and various pranayamas and all those things in order to have a spiritual experience there a guru is mandatory because if you make some mistakes it will have a repercussion on the body. Okay, that is why. So I feel that in today's age, the best alternative for people is to do Devada Upasana. Simple Devada Upasana. Nothing complicated. And Shastras give you that op opportunity. They tell you various stotras or Shastra Namas, 1000 names of a deity. Shiva Shastra Nama. Such a beautiful thing to do. I have recommended that to so many people. On Mondays, you do it and pour water on Shivalinga. Uh, Narmadeshwar Shivalinga, Baneshwar, they call it. If you do it for a few months, things like depression, all that will start reducing. You know, um, I want to talk about like modern day Hindus who look down upon rituals like this because as kids we were just told to do these things without an explanation mm. and now as we are turning 30 <laughs> uh, the explanation is available on YouTube uh, there are meanings behind the rituals yes if you just blindly do those rituals of course mm. there won't be any kind of mm. uh, an, an impact no, even then there will be an impact. Oh, really? Let's put it this way. To give you an example, when you are in school, when, when a child goes to school for the first time, so teacher is teaching him how to, uh, these are the numbers, mm. how to add. Ask him that what is the use of this? He has no idea. He's a child. He is doing it because his teachers are telling him. He grows up, then he goes to the local grocer to buy something. His mother has sent him something. Then he understands, okay, the reason why I know, need to know the numbers and addition is because I need to calculate and all that. That's one example I'm giving you. Okay? So initial stages, if you, ex and not just in spirituality, in anything else, if you expect that you will have the complete understanding and don't, then only I will start, you will never be able to start. Mm. Your journey is over. Start with some degree of faith on the deity and certain mantras, you will not understand everything. But as you change yourself through the sadhana, understanding will also come to you. Mm. Okay. And the rituals are very beautifully designed. It's like it's an art. Whoever created the rituals, the pattern of the rituals, as you go deeper, you will understand through the... It's, it's a joy. Rituals are a joy. Okay. Rituals are not to be looked down upon. On the contrary, rituals make it far more vibrant, the practice. Beautiful it becomes. You will absolutely enjoy it. Now, coming to the what we were discussing about the guru point. So, I feel that for other things, you start your own sadhana. Number one. Number two, you decide ki what is the path suitable for you. Okay. Mm. And accordingly, find a guru of that path. So, if you are into some kind of yogic practice, good. Go to the yogic practice. If you think that, no, I want a Vaishnava Diksha. You like Vishnu or forms of Vishnu or Krishna. So go to uh, places where Vaishnavas are more prominent. Say go to Vrindavan or go to some other big Vaishnava temple. 
Speak to people there. Say that I want an initiation. I want to practice this. Whom should I approach? Okay. So one of the problems I find when people ask that, how do I get a guru? So all they do is sitting in front of the computer and they're assuming that guru computer se jayega, bahar nikal gaya. Hmm. So get out, meet people, take your time, not one, two days, take a year's time, roam around, meet people. First determine ki, which is the path I want. One of the major problems people have this, as I mentioned, they have this fantastic idea that out of the blue, they're walking on the street. Suddenly somebody will manifest and kuch Himalaya se kuch aane wala hai. Yeah. Kuch nahi aane wala hai. Koi nahi aane wala hai. Because you are not that good. Let's put it this way. Nature has degrees. The concept of adhikara is very prominent in nature. Nature is not a democracy. If you go into stand on a mountain, okay, today, and you shout that, why am I alive? Where is God? Se jawab aega, kuch nahi. Nature doesn't care about you. N nature cares. Depending on what is your level of adhikara. Adhikara means your rights. Rights are subjective to your capacity and competency. And past karma. All those are figured <laughs> in the capacity competency. Your capacity competency rises to a certain level. Tum ghar pe baito, wohi pe answer dhoonte ve tumhare paas aajayega. You don't have to go anywhere else. And if you are not capable, not competent, you can go to pillar post everywhere. Okay. Himalaya to the ocean. Okay. No answers will come. But if you still are desperate and you can't read nature, so if an answer is not coming, if you're searching for a guru and is not appearing, perhaps nature is saying that it's not the time to go to a guru. So what do you do? Make the best of the current situation. Sit at home and do sadhana. Okay. But if you are still desperate, then you may end up with a wrong guru or a wrong individual or somebody who is not competent enough. There are good gurus and there are false gurus also. Both of them are there. That's the reality. We cannot deny that. I've seen both. So that's why I know. So first thing is that focus on your own sadhana. Build a base of sadhana. Something that you can do even without a guru. And then pray to the devata that and this is the beauty of it. If your sadhana is going well and it may take time. It's not don't expect anything to happen in three months, four months. Spend few years. In fact, I I I tell people this. Something that I learned from that Siddha Purusha that I was talking about. Until you have actually consistently worshipped a deity for three to four years, anything else that happens very fast is not going to last. Minimum three to four years of worship is required on a regular basis, properly. Un until the techniques actually come into no, your life? No, until the bonding is formed with the Devata properly. Wow. Three okay. to four years. And that worship could be as simple as talking to the deity thinking that it's your friend and doing a mantra jab ha, simple simple mantra jab say wow. somebody does om bhairavaya nama that's a simple mantra anybody can do om bhairavaya nama ha that's a nama mantra of bhairav baba okay you do few malas or something say and you do that consistently for 3 years your test is don't expect experiences your test is that can you do it every day for 3 years how many times up to you that you determine i'm not even telling how many times Okay, whether you do one mala, which means that 108 times, five minutes ka puja karo, 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever you do. But fix a thing and do it consistently. And obviously, uh, if you have to, if you're serious about spiritual growth, then it should be a little substantial. Like if you do just one minute or two minutes of it, then it will take you perhaps a thousand years, God knows. I'm just saying. So you have to do it 25 minutes to 30 minutes at least. In your 24 hour schedule, at least 25 to 30 minutes should be there. Now, whether you have concentration, whether you like it or not, leave all that aside. Just do it. First test is, are you able to do it in a disciplined manner for a few years? Mm. Three to four years. That okay. creates your bond. Okay. First step. 12 years you do. You are set for life. <laughs> What does that mean? That means that 12 years is like a cutoff period. What happens after that? After that, though, then the deity will take over. If your sadhana is correct. Correct means what I say is that follow the shastras. More or less broad guidelines at the initial stages. What the Don't experiment outside of what is there in the shastras because that is the accumulated wisdom of thousands of years of people with far greater caliber than you and me. Can a very evolved person, hmm. a Siddha Purush, hmm. an Aghori who's been practicing for years, hmm. become evil at a very high spiritual level? Evil? Mm. Evil in what sense? 
a very low level example of this would be you know these uh, gurujis who then become powerful they initially start spiritually they grow they do good in the world and then at some point lust takes over yeah. they... that's possible that's possible but uh, more or less uh, that happens when there is deep down the spiritual desire is not there like it's not about connecting with god yeah, it's not about, about connecting with the deity or anything but it's about more acquiring power or finding some quick techniques or something like that and um, the the methods of mantra shastra are so powerful that if you follow those rules and correctly do certain sadhanas you might acquire certain abilities but that does not um, mean that they are necessarily spiritual or dharmic or something that is uh, that will take you to the right direction in which uh, humanity should go ideally so you can then misuse but the law of karma is ruthless it will uh, catch up with you you will fall okay. eventually in fact not just today what do we see in the evidence of the shastras there are asuras who have ruled for thousands of years how did they rule they did those practices they acquired a lot of power they defeated the ordinary realm of gods defeated asuras defeated everybody they kept ruling for thousands of years until one of the the shiva or vishnu or devi somebody or the other finally decides to put an end to their reign and there's a huge fight and then they defeat them so if they have ruled for thousands of years smaller version of that will always be there in this age so trs clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our home page reading through all the playlists